So here we are on board of Cathay Pacific 888 from Hong Kong to New York's JFK Airport with a technical stop in Vancouver, Canada. It took me quite some time to get here but I enjoyed every little part of it as it's all part of the experience for sure. I was seated in seat 2A as other seats were fully booked already. So no window seat for this flight but I highly doubt that this caused this flight to be any less pleasant. I was greeted by name when I boarded the plane as one of the last passengers for this flight as first class passengers can board at their convenience. Within a few minutes of literally being brought to my own little hotel room in the sky, I was asked, well more suggested I suppose, that I take a nice glass of champagne and to alleviate any further waiting that I had to endure from this huge seat with a massive TV screen in front of me. If there was anything that any of the staff could do for me, I just have to give them a shout. Wonderful! Let this 20,000 US dollar journey begin with a short look at all the amenities that were exclusively available for me. Huge semi-private cubicle-like seats, private fresh orchid, large screen and no overhead luggage bins in first class. What a space! This entire area for just a maximum of 6 passengers. And one of them was me for today. A short look at some other amenities shows that I have a proper sized Aesop mail travel kit. Get glass of champagne with the raw nuts and controls everywhere. This smaller screen was a small TV but also the controls for part of my cabin. I could even open the flight map on this thing while watching something else on the big screen. How amazing is that? Right next to it were all the seat and lighting controls. I think I didn't even try all of them at the end. There were little lights everywhere, but I didn't have the hang of that touchscreen just yet. Life jacket was in a small compartment next to me. Another compartment was empty, but I didn't use it in fear of forgetting it later on. There were also several outlets for 220 volts as well as USB charging options and of course audio. While I struggle with that huge table, I would like to suggest to please hit the subscribe button if you aren't subscribed already. YouTube will send notifications if you click the notification bell and the like to this video will also help me out. When I finally manage to get my table set up properly, it's clear that I will be perfectly able to fit all the food I was about to be served during this flight, but that's for later. We had to depart first. And while I was trying to get my table set up for some time, the cabin doors were closed and the plane taxied to the runway. Since I didn't have my own windows, yes multiple, I had to use this little screen. But since it was night time already, there wasn't much to see anyway. The cabin lights were dimmed to a soft blue color as we departed for Vancouver in Canada and then ongoing New York City's JFK airport as the final destination of this flight. The large screen indeed was larger, but the quality of the camera wasn't that spectacular. Nighttime recording didn't help for sure, but I couldn't be bothered by that too much.
DMFly Entertainment was quite extensive from what I could see, but it's quite enjoyed. I eventually watched a few episodes of comedy, but I also needed a few hours of sleep, so I had to balance my time here a little bit. In between my free time, two full meals would be served as well. All what a miserable life here in Cathay's first class. Just checking my bed to be. And yes, it's as white as a cherry. As there is an armrest that can be stowed. Although it took some time before I realized that if it didn't come out, I just had to pull a little bit harder. Once we were at cruising altitude and all settled, it was time for the onboard feast of a meal that I was promised when looking at some other YouTube videos about Cathay Pacific's first class offer. It all started with an appetizer and one more champagne before the table was made and I was presented King Superior Caviar. After this, I actually didn't eat the main course as I was simply still stuffed from all those hours in the ring and the beer back at the bottom of the I did have some smaller snacks and was informed that I could have my dinner at the time of my pleasing later on during the fight as well. That was generous but probably not needed. Let's have a look at those pajamas that were given to me as soon as I bought it. This because there are three sizes and I opted for a medium. This pajama has now become a part of my wardrobe for those chilly nights in the Indonesian countryside. And yes, they do occur for sure. The eye shield and slippers I only used during the flight though. I then wanted to change some new pajamas to give them a try, so I headed to probably the only toilet on board that didn't have a queue, and was also big enough to actually change into pajamas without raising alarm about what you were actually doing in the toilet. Once changed, my bed was made, and it was time to catch some sleep as this trip is bound to give me a jet lag. Before arrival in Vancouver, so technically the next morning for me, I had a quick breakfast as I slept for quite some time and I had informed the staff not to wake me for anything less than an emergency. So they didn't wake me and when I needed to slightly hurry this breakfast, I regretted that as sleep is clearly overrated anyway. For those with ongoing itineraries to New York, there is a Cathay Pacific lounge available at Vancouver airport. So after a short walk in the terminal, I headed over there. It was an evening here, but my brain still thought it was late in the morning, so I had something to eat here and a coffee. A few weeks after my trip, Cathay Pacific announced that they would cancel the Cathay Pacific 888 and 865 flights between Vancouver and New York starting March 2020. Yes, that March 2020. Because this cancellation was already planned a half a year in advance, I assume this is not a route we will see reappear anytime soon. The second time boarding Cathay Pacific CX888 is just as much fun as it was the first time. Where the first leg took just short of 12 hours, the second one would be shorter. But we still had to cross almost all of the continental United States, so that's another 5 more hours to go. I now had more time to show my personal space that I was enjoying this entire flight 
as I bought it as one of the first names. So here's a look for you under better lighting conditions as cabin lights were turned on now. And then I also noticed I was missing a few fellow first class passengers. Maybe they will still show up? Once in the air I received a dinner while my biological clock told me it was time for lunch. No harm done as the food was very nice. The remaining hours of the flight were at night and with my jet lag kicking in I decided to take it slow and watch some TV. Apparently I also slept some more but I don't really remember that so that's the end of this very luxury flight for now. After a short week full of new experiences and impressions, it was time to head home already. For sure I would have loved to stay longer, but I still had about half of my Cathay Pacific first class experience to go. So why not head back to Hong Kong and see how the second half goes. As I arrived at the airport and checked in with Cathay Pacific at the very end of the row of check-in counters, I was once again whisked away towards my first class experience. I soon found myself in the American Airlines flagship first lounge as Cathay Pacific uses this lounge as well. The views were very nice, the views were very nice on this clear blue sky day. So I settled near the windows with some snacks and drink to slowly roll into my role as first class flyer. And yeah, I also had a glass of champagne for sure. It was around noon anyway, so not too early in the day to get the alcohol flowing. Once settled on board, be it barely, I was served a new glass of champagne and walnuts. Always the welcome style of the trip. And of course we can't skip the caviar, that's for sure. Of course I was served only at cruising altitude. Back then I didn't have the fancy camera or GoPro 9 to record that nicely, so I don't include that in this video here. Eventually I was asked if I wanted to have my bed made. I decided that it was a nice idea and changed into my second new pajama for the trip. When I returned a few minutes later, the bed was made and I could enjoy some in-flight entertainment. The bed itself is about 2 meters long and slightly narrower at the feet, but I managed to get a proper sleep in here without any problems. So yeah, first class is absolutely something that I would do again. But I guess that will have to wait until I find another suitable error fare ticket again. That's two very unlikely things that absolutely have to come together sometime in the future. Thank you for watching until the end and see you in a future video.